Hey, this is Mike. Thank you so much for choosing this video. Today I'm in Whiteville, North Carolina, visiting Van Underwood Chrysler Jeep Dodge Ram, and I'm checking out a 2024 Jeep Wrangler four-door in the Sport S trim level. This vehicle is sitting on 245-75 Nexen tires wrapped around 17-inch alloy wheels with a gloss gray finish. It also has four-wheel disc brakes with ventilated rotors in the front and solid rotors in the back. The name of this color is Hydro Blue Pearl Coat, and I think it looks really good. This is probably my favorite color uh, in the Jeep lineup, uh, this blue color. Not a lot of sun shining right now, but still, uh, it looks good. Especially when you contrast it with the, uh, the fender flares here and the hard top that's all matte black. So it has that, that kind of classic Jeep look. Same th thing with the grill. It's, it's very straightforward Jeep style. Now it has the round halogen headlights and it has a little Jeep Easter egg there in the center. Same thing with the fog lights, reflector halogen headlights. Recovery hooks are extended here on the top of the bumper and then the bumper is actually covered up uh, with a plastic material here as well. Looking at the profile, uh, once again, we see the, that contrast between the hard top, the fender flares, the color, also the gray wheels. Uh, the gloss gray wheel, wheels look really nice uh, in this combination, in my opinion. And the handles are that matte black. Then you have the trail rated badge here. And then the Jeep Wrangler badge there but you notice it doesn't have the unlimited name anymore uh wrangler unlimited used to uh, not too long ago refer to the four-door now they just say four-door a long time ago the unlimited was just an extended longer uh wheelbase jeep wrangler uh, so they kind of used that term for a while for different reasons and now they've just dropped it off this is what the key looks like and it's a partial proximity key uh, it has the lock the unlock buttons remote uh, panic button here it has a physical key, a little switchblade type physical key there. Nice big Jeep name on the other side. And it's kind of a large key. Um, it's not super duper heavy, but it's kind of large. And, but it kind of goes with that rugged look that Jeep goes for. Uh, so basically it doesn't have any kind of uh, sensors on the handle. You just press the button to unlock it or lock it uh, or use the physical key there. And then when you get inside the vehicle, it senses the key and you just have a push button. Uh, now, it does have the physical key location here on the driver and passenger sides. And since this is a Wrangler, of course, you can remove uh, the doors. So the hinges are right here. You can also fold down the windshield. So that windshield can fold down and you see little bumpers there. Uh, and of course, take the hard top off and go completely just open air experience. So the inside of the door, not only does it have this handle here, this is all like a hard touch surface here, very durable, except for the armrest, that's a soft touch, kind of rubbery soft. Uh, but this door is, has the handle here, but also has a handle here for lifting up on the door and lifting it off the hinges. You also have net pocket there, keeping everything secure while you're off-roading. It does have door lock controls, but no window controls. The window controls are located right in here in the center of the console. Manually adjusted seats here on the Sport. Cloth seats with the uh, like a gold accent stitching there and a gray cloth seat. And they do a good job of making it very comfortable. Jeep does a good job of uh, designing the, the feel of the seats and Jeep, Ram, Chrysler, uh, Dodge, all that stuff makes really good seats. There's the, uh, the floor mat. And you can see that the floor mat snaps in place, keeping it straight for you. Now you could upgrade these cloth, for, uh, these carpet floor mats with the rubber slush mats, which will definitely be, I would definitely recommend that, especially if you're going on any kind of off-roading adventure, you definitely need that. Lockable glove compartment, and has a traditional, you know, kind of smooth plastic on the inside there. And check it out, you have this, uh, this <laughs> the very, very traditional handle uh, for off-roading right here, and it's just a really durable, hard plastic and then check it out you got this cloth right in here with the gold stitching it's kind of like a, a light gray cloth looking nice and the dash is a hard touch as well 
And then you have the handle, help you get in and out of the vehicle, especially if it's lifted up, that comes in handy. And of course, they sell handles that you can put here and stuff. They have a lot of accessories, of course. And the hard top's completely removable. Very easy to just turn those little knobs there and, and take it off uh, here in the front. Uh, one person can do the front, but you will need the help to get the, uh, the back portion off. This one does have the privacy glass there in the back, including the back doors. And uh, the opening, getting in and out is fairly easy. You can see the door opening is good. A little bit smaller here in the back. Uh, the back door, very similar to the front. Uh, hard plastic, soft here. This is enclosed, and then this is your liftoff point. Net pocket at the bottom. All right. Now these cloth seats in the back, basically a bench seat. Uh, it does have the handles as well. And there's the leg room cup holders, power window controls are here in the center, just like the front. Then you have climate control vents. A Little bit of a hump there in the middle, not a big deal. Now the, when these seats fold down, let me go ahead and fold them down here. You fold it down, it puts the headrest down. And when you come down, uh, I don't know if you can see this, the actual bottom of the seat is and you can see there's this, a piston right there to help you lower and raise it. But the bottom of the seat lowers as well. So when you put the seat down, it gives you close as they can to the same level as the cargo area. Uh, but it does, you know, if you have something under the seat, you would have to take that out. It is easy to raise and lower. It does have the uh, latch system for car seats there. Really easy to get to. There's pockets on the back of both front seats as well. And there's some speakers, lights, all that stuff. There's another light there in the cargo area. Taking a look at the back of the vehicle, um, it does have the privacy glass, like I mentioned, but it also has, since it has the hard top, it has the heated rear glass as well. And the tail lights, standard bulbs back here. The backup camera is in the center of the wheel in that perfect center place. You also have the third brake light here above the tire. And you can put a larger tire because this uh, this tire holder, uh, that third brake light lifts up. You're able to adjust it up and down. So that way you can put larger tires. All right, so we got the recovery hook there. The handle is matte black. And the reflectors are located in the in the tail light. Uh, some of the Wranglers have the reflectors here on the bumper, but this one apparently has it in the uh, the tail light. All right, go ahead and open this up. And it has this little plaque here. Sh neat looking spec plaque, I guess. And they sell a lot of accessories that attach here on the inside of the tailgate, which is cool. Rear wiper as well with the washer. This lifts up really easy. And look at all that room to get cargo in and out of the vehicle. Really easy to, to work with. Uh, so this is a uh, case for the hard tops. Get that out of the way. All right, so this is the, uh, the floor, load floor, and it has lots of tie downs, which is, if you're going off-roading, you want to tie down, especially heavy objects and stuff like that. 12 volt power supply here, uh, and that is, you see the little battery showing that it is, uh, doesn't switch on and off with the ignition. It's directly connected to the battery, so you could use it any time. Also, the uh, rails here, the, uh, these are, color coded so you can see that blue is there so when you take the top off you actually see these roll cage is also um, matched to the vehicle body color nice now this lifts up and when you have the tailgate closed it covers up this little bit so it's a little bit of a secure location here uh, when the vehicle is locked anyway and then it has this compartment and a little plug uh, to drain water out of this compartment when needed there's places for the door hinge bolts, the roof bolts, and the windshield bolts. And when you take those off, you'll need a place to put those bolts, and it has a nice little spot. Uh, also, the uh, tools and 
for the spare tire are located here, tool and jack. You can take this floor out if you wanted to, like there's a little bit of space that you can slide this out and get it out of the way if you need that little bit of extra space. You're gonna forego your, your security as far as your subfloor, but uh, you could potentially add slightly to the cargo space there. So you can sold, fold these seats down in a 60-40 split fashion um, to add to your cargo space while still maintaining some passenger space, or you can fold them both down and have a wide open area in here. Fuel cap is here on the driver's side, and there's no door or anything, it just has the cap and a little tether to keep you from losing the cap. Since it has that partial proximity key system, you just, to start it up, you just have to have the key inside the vehicle, hold the brake, and press this button to start it up. You don't have to hold the button, you just press it. Here's the floorboard in front of the driver's seat. Floor mat snaps in place. There's the accelerator, brake pedal, but no footrest, but there is enough room for a, uh, a clutch pedal. Opening in the hood just has these latches here. So you just kind of press this all the way down and it pops off like that. Once you have both sides unlatched, there's a catch here in the middle. If you can see that, it's right in the middle. Just reach in and move it to the right. Just move it to the right and you can see it right there and it releases the hood. The hood's not super heavy, but it has a little bit of weight to it. Now it does require the prop to hold it up. The prop is on the underside of the hood and it swings down to right here. The hood's well insulated. Uh, there's also seals around the side and the back and the front, uh, sealing up the engine compartment. Uh, the battery is easy to get to. It's over here and it's insulated as well. There's lots of heat shielding on the firewall. Uh, this is the 2.0 liter four cylinder engine, turbocharged and it's paired to an eight-speed automatic transmission. You can see the turbocharger on this side. The inside of the driver's side door, just like the other side, except for it has the side mirror adjustments there. And the side mirrors are heated as well. To the left of the steering column, uh, the headlight switch is here and it has off parking light on the headlights and then the automatic function there as well. This is for the fog lights, center button. Then you have the dimmer switch for the interior gauges right there. Also, check out these little little Jeeps right in here. That's pretty cool. Then it has a tilt and a telescoping steering column that latches, locks in place here. The driver's seat is a little bit different from the passenger side. You do have the lumbar adjustment here. It's kind of rubberized looking, feeling pretty good. Same thing with this, is a height adjustment and it's rubberized as well. So it can raise and lower the seat. And then the strap, you pull that to adjust the back uh, of the seat as well. So it has a little bit more adjustments here on the driver's seat than the passenger side. I'm sitting in the driver's seat, I'm six feet tall, and I have the seat all the way back and all the way down to show you the potential leg room here. Now it's probably, I could probably pull up just a little bit and be fine. Uh, there's no footrest or anything here to kind of gauge it, but from just pressing the brake pedal, which I can press it all the way down, but uh, so I could drive all the way with the seat all the way back, but if you're a little bit over six feet tall, shouldn't really have an issue. Steering wheel, leather wrapped, feels really nice. Uh, I think this is a, it's hard to tell, but um, I think it might be a simulated leather, but it feels really good. The stitching there on the inside as well. And it has the buttons on the back of the steering wheel. So there's buttons back here, I don't know if you can see them, right there. And they kind of line up with your fingers. If you're not familiar with these, these are really good. Uh, so your fingers are right here. As you're holding the steering wheel, they line up perfectly. So the volume is here on the right side. There's a center button as well uh, that cycles and changes through your audio sources. On the left side here on the back is up and down, change through your tracks or radio stations, depending on what you're doing. And then the center button is to cycle through your presets only. Cruise control is here on the right side and it has the adaptive cruise control. Um, really nice. And you can set the distance between you and the vehicle in front of you there. And you can turn on the cruise control separate from the adaptive cruise control. Um, and then you can have uh, set, resume, cancel, all that stuff. Pretty traditional, I guess. Here on the left side, uh, that you have the ability to answer and hang up on calls once you pair your phone. I like the way they have separate buttons uh, So you, you don't know because a lot of vehicles have the same button to answer and hang up So I like to have separate buttons there same thing with the the increase and decrease your distance I like to have the separate buttons um, and then Voice recognition as well, and it's pretty advanced the voice recognition once you get used to it 
And then these little arrows in this OK corresponds with the gauges, little screen there between the gauges. We'll get to that in a minute. Front and rear uh, wipers are here on the right side. On the left side is the turn signal as well as the headlight dimmer switch. So the gauge is uh, fairly straightforward and simple. Uh, your RPM tachometer is here on the left side, speedometer is here on the right side, but you do have the digital speedometer, really nice, good size digital speedometer there in the center. Uh, engine coolant temperature, fuel gauge, outside temperature, what gear you're in, and what direction the vehicle's facing. That little W right there showing the vehicle's facing west, that's the digital compass. And of course it has the odometer there at the bottom, how many miles the vehicle has. But if you scroll down, you can see that this is part of a menu system. Speedometer is part of the menu system. Uh, so we can scroll down. Now we have the vehicle info. And right now it's showing the tire pressure. But if I scroll right or left, I can get more information. Transmission temperature, oil pressure, uh, battery voltage, all kinds of stuff there. Scrolling down again, uh, driver assist system. So those, this will show you the status of the, uh, like the adaptive cruise control. Scrolling down again will take us to the fuel economy. And we have two of them. Uh, this one has the current, in other words, right now as we're driving, and that's gonna fluctuate and constantly change numbers constantly while you're driving. If you don't want that, you go to the next one. It does, that, it does away with that. Um, but it also gives you the ability to have two independent, separate um, ones that you can reset and get different, um, you know, basically fuel economy for a trip or whatever, or overall fuel economy. So you have two of them that you can reset. Same thing with the trips. Uh, you have the two trips, A and B, and you can reset them independently. They have a timer, miles per gallon, and how far you've traveled with the miles. Scrolling down again will be your status of the stop-start uh, feature. You can turn it off, or just whether it's not, why it's not turning on right now. You can see driver seat belts unbuckled. Scrolling down again, status whatever your radio is doing is here. Next one will be stored messages. Uh, screen setup. This is where you can go in here and you can change. So like that little W up there, if you want to change that uh, to something else, we go here to upper left and we can change it to, let's see, we can put nothing there. We can go to range. So now we know uh, how far the vehicle uh, can drive before you have to get fuel. All right, let's get back out of that. And you scroll down again and go back to, it'll go back to your speedometer, which is the original number one option. You notice this, the digital speedometer is nice and big and clear, white lettering, black background, easy to read. Um, if you want to change it to kilometers per hour, you just hit the OK button and it goes to kilometers per hour. Now, if you accidentally press it, which I'll, I've done in the past, um, and if you if the number looks odd to you, make sure you didn't pre accidentally press it and make sure it's on miles per hour and not kilometers per hour. All right, we saw the start button there. So here's the new screen. Fantastic clarity and looks fan. Just overall, I'm impressed the way it looks. Um, uh, it has that widescreen look, and it has the the little icons here on the left side for navigating through the system. You can also tap the top, and it pulls down more information there. Uh, there's shortcuts. Then of course you can put that back out of the way. You can have notica notifications up here as well, and. Uh, you can hit 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 that if you want to adjust your temperature. So it just has a very intuitive, um, and this is your home screen, and has these different widgets here in which you can add, sort of like your cell phone, you know, has different widgets. So if we go over here and we just kind of add one, let's go add a widget here, and we'll go to climate. Now the climate's there. Now um, you can add a widget called shortcuts, which somebody already did here, and then you can have shortcuts. Uh, so let's go to controls, and then rear view camera. So now, even if you're not in reverse, you can go to that shortcut and look at the rear view camera. Now is a good time to look at it. Looks really good. Um, it's in that center location. It's a wide angle view. Uh, it's really good for just a camera itself. So that's your home screen. The next one is your media screen. Uh, so you have different sources, FM, AM, satellite radio, Bluetooth, USB one, USB two and auxiliary input. It also has Apple CarPlay and Android Auto as well as audio sources and just the whole system. All right, the next one is uh, comfort. So this will be your big climate control, basically. Temperatures here, where you want the air to blow, air conditioning, fan speed, front and rear defrosters. Pretty basic, simple, but looks fantastic. <laughs> uh, hopefully the camera's doing it justice because this screen just looks great. 
Next one is pairing your phone. And once you pair it, you'll have access to your phone book and make and receive calls using your voice, using the voice recognition. You'll be able to receive calls, respond to text messages, all kinds of stuff without taking your eyes off the road and hands off the wheel. All right, the vehicle right here, vehicle, this is the more information about it. You can uh, adjust the display, set up profiles, uh, turn off features, adjust the clock and date, uh, pair of phones, uh, just the camera settings here. Um, we'll go ahead and go to the, the camera delay, also uh, the guidelines, which we'll look at in a minute. All right, and then the uh, the apps here, off-road pages. This shows the uh, the status of the four-wheel drive system as well as the steering angle. So you can see as I turn the steering wheel, you'll be able to see uh, the wheels there turn and show you the exact angle. Um, and you can also keep an eye on different gauges here as well and you can find out the status of your pitch and roll whether it be you know going up and down hill or the left side to side uh, angle of the vehicle uh, and then the all apps would show up here um, so all, you can actually do shortcuts here on the home screen anything you want and there's the uh, Android Auto as well and then you can pair phones of course there's all the apps So that's kind of a quick rundown of the screen. All right, let's go down here. We have physical buttons uh, for the climate control. Uh, there's the volume for the radio, change to the tracks. You can also turn the, turn the system off by quickly pressing that and unmute the audio. Uh, and then the climate control, fan speed, where you want the air to blow, recirculate the air, front and rear defrosters, all this can be controlled with physical buttons as well. Uh, and then you have the max AC as well. You can mute the radio at any time. This is the turn turn it off. So you press that and it turns the, the screen off. Uh, if you just wanna mute the radio, you can press that one. Stop start feature, I'd like to turn that off. So there's the off light. Uh, and then traction control is default on and this is the off light. If you need to spin tires, you can turn that off. Here's the downhill descent for a four wheel drive low uh, for going basically up or downhill it's like a off-road cruise control in a way and uh, this is the screen off and leave everything on so like if you want the audio and everything playing and everything normal you just don't want the screen on you can hit the screen off button here this actually turns the screen off but also all the systems like the the radio is gonna be turned off all that stuff all right four-way flashes are here as well that's important um, 12 volt power supply and you see it has a little key there letting you know that it is uh, turns on and off with the ignition and there's the power window controls here and if you don't want the kids to play with them you can turn that off and these are one touch just touch it and they go pretty quick they're one touch down but you do have to hold them to go up media input there uh, USB-C USB and auxiliary inputs has a little door to cover them up. Little storage compartment there as well. And has a rubber mat that you can take out, clean, put back in. Here's the shifter. And uh, we already saw the camera, but I activated the guidelines now. So let me go ahead and put it in reverse. And you can see the active guidelines there. Those little lines right there. And as I turn the steering wheel, they'll turn and let us know um, the direction of the vehicle as we back up. And the center line as well, very important. Especially if you're off-roading. There's neutral, drive, and you can go into a manual mode and bump through and change to the eight gear ratios manually like a ratchet shifter if you need to. And then the four-wheel drive controls are here. Uh, Two-wheel drive high, four-wheel drive high, neutral, and four-wheel drive low. And you can see the path is fairly straightforward. There's the handbrake, parking brake. Little pocket there below it. And there's some cup holders. Now this compartment here has, um, it's like a vinyl type covering and it's soft. It doesn't bottom out or anything like that. It's really, really soft. And you can lift it up. There's actually two little levers there. There's top one and a bottom one. So as I lift the top one, you see it has a smaller little pocket here. Place for wires to go in and out of the compartment here. And it's a rubberized surface as well. The second one, the bottom one, lifts up the larger portion, and then there's a USB uh, 
as well. And then there's a little light in here as well. And it's a rubber bottom portion as well. So all this is, I wish they would have put a little bit lighter um, rubber mat at the bottom so you can see in there a little bit better, but um, it's, it's quite big. I mean, it's, it's a lot bigger than what it looks right now. The rear view mirror has the manual day and night mode. These are little microphones right here for the, when you're making a call or receiving, uh, yeah, making a call or receiving a call, you can talk to, that's where it picks up your voice. The visors have like this vinyl tough material around them. They have mirrors and lights. They also have a little clip right here and they do extend out as well. There's a clip on both sides. Uh, they extend out on a metal rod as well. So you can see the latches here, and then there's a turn latch here. So it's really easy to take these tops off. These are like T-tops type. And then the, uh, large, so you can take these off separate from the back portion. Here's the window sticker. I'm gonna have this in the description. Um, I'm gonna have this copy and paste of this information as well as an actual image in the video as well. Uh, so you can review it. Now this is the Sport S, right? But it has optional equipment. So uh, most people get mixed up and they think that, that every trim is identical, but it's not because there's optional equipment here. Now there's some brands that do have every vehicle the same, but this, you know, with, with Jeep, there's optional equipment. Most Jeeps are slightly different. They have different optional equipment. Uh, so it's very rare to find one without any optional equipment. So just keep that in mind. Uh, this There's the customer preferred package 22S is included in this vehicle. And you can see it has uh, no soft top. The, and it has the, what they call the hard top is called the freedom panel. But yeah, I'll have all this information in the description. You see the fuel economy, stuff like that. United States. All right, so thank you for watching. Thank you to Van Underwood here, Van Underwood Chrysler Jeep Dodge Ram in Whiteville, North Carolina. If you remember, I don't know if you've been on my channel, but I used to work there, uh, here. And um, so, it's, yeah, it's been a long time, but yeah, this is where I got started in the car business. And uh, it was a really positive experience. So thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.